now we're going to look at the digestive system of pigs. I would say that the digestive system of pigs would be kind of similar to the digestive system of humans. Pigs, they are non-ruminants, so they only have a one chambered stomach. And pigs are also omnivores. All right, so the five main structures, or the main structures of the digestive system of a pig are on the screen here. So the first, we have the mouth, so the food is taken in by the mouth. Pigs do have teeth, and because the pigs have teeth, they will be chewing their food. Then the food pass through the esophagus, through the process of peristalsis, and it enters into the stomach. The food is temp temporarily stored in the stomach. Um, digestion of proteins occur in the stomach and then the food will go into the small intestine. Further digestion and the final digestion will occur in the small intestine and the undigested food will enter into the large intestine. Then the food or the um, undigested food is stored in the rectum, that is the feces, and then it is later removed to the anus. So this is very similar to human digestion. All right, so now we, we will look at a uh, little more details regarding the different structures of the digestive system of a pig. So first we have the mouth and the purpose of the mouth is to ingest and masticate or which masticate means to chew the food. After the food has been chewed for a period of time and that will not be for a long period of time, probably for about a minute, small amount of digestion occurs there. So the food is partially digested and it enters into the esophagus and the esophagus simply transport the food from the mouth to the stomach. And it does this by the motion called peristalsis. Peristalsis is a wave-like movement. The muscles will be contracting and relaxing and that will allow the food to enter into the stomach easily. So in the stomach, the indigested food is stored temporarily, as I mentioned before. And here's where chemical digestion really begins. Some of it might have uh, begun in the mouth, but because the food is not in the mouth for a very long period of time, much digestion will not occur. So in the stomach, the gastric juices will be produced and the gastric juice will con contain hydrochloric acid. It will have um, pepsin as the enzyme and pepsin will begin the digestion of proteins. And as you know, the proteins will be broken down into smaller and smaller structures and the smallest structure of the protein is the amino acid. Then the food will enter into the duodenum. Here we have the duodenum, pancreas and liver mentioned together. So to begin, um, so the liver, the liver will be producing the bile. The bile will enter into the, into the duodenum and the bile will emulsify the fat or break the fat particles into smaller pieces as I mentioned before uh, as well. And the pancreatic juices will be released. The pancreatic juices contains the other enzymes like it will contain trypsin, it contains um, amylase and it would contain lipase. So those three enzymes will break down the nutrients that are present there. In the ileum, final digestion occurs. The carbohydrates will break down completely into glucose. The fats will break down completely into glycerol and fatty acids. And the proteins will be fully digested into amino acids. And the main thing that occurs in the ileum is actually the absorption of these nutrients. So the nutrients will pass through the walls of the ileum and enter into the blood vessels and it will be taken to the liver or the fats will be taken into the lymphatic system. Pigs also have a structure, the cecum, and here is where you have microorganisms and the microorganisms are going to carry out a little bit of digestion. It will break down whatever cellulose is in the diet of the animal. In same similar thing happened in the colon, some amount of microbial digestion occur and the water is absorbed in the colon. The rectum, the rectum stores the undigested food. Well, I should go, the colon is actually part of the large intestine. The rectum, the rectum um, temporarily stores the undigested food. The water is reabsorbed and then the undigested food is eliminated to the anus. So that um, summarizes the process of digestion in pigs. Next, we will look at digestion in rabbits. The rabbits are also non-ruminants. They are sometimes referred to as pseudo-ruminants. Pseudo, the word means false. They, they can sometimes, um, the way they digest their food may have some amount of similarity to the ruminants. That's why they 
sometimes call the rabbits pseudo-ruminants. But generally speaking, uh, they are actually non-ruminants. The digestive system are structured mostly like non-ruminants. So the, the structure is very similar to mammals. Most of the digestion occurs in the large intestine and in the cecum. Whereas in the pig that we just looked at, most of the digestion would have occurred in the stomach and the ileum. But for the pigs, most of the digestion occurs in the cecum and in the large intestine. And that is why they are called hind gut formin, uh, fermenters. Hind meaning glass or the glass structure. Hind is at the back. Um, got four mentors. Four mentors mean that fermentation occurs in this location. And if fermentation occurs, you should know that fermentation will occur because of the help of bacteria, usually anaerobic bacteria. So the cecum, lots of symbiotic bacteria are present in that structure and they help to break down the cellulose. So the animal ingest the food, it passes through the mouth, it passes through the esophagus, goes into the stomach, passes through the small intestine, and when it reaches the cecum, it takes some time there and some digestion occurs. There are two droppings that the animals will release after the food passes through the cecum. There's a soft dropping, and that's, uh, they're black in color. These are re-ingested, and we call this coprophagy. And the higher droppings, they also have a higher droppings and that's not re-ingested because that um, does not have any nutrient remain. So why would the animal re-ingest these pellets? Reabsorption of the nutrients occur in the ileum. So as you should recall, most of the absorption of the nutrients, rather all of the absorption of the nutrients should have taken place in the small intestine. And the small intestine comes before the large intestine. But at this point, when the rabbit consumes its food, when the food reaches the small intestine, the food is not fully digested because the diet of the rabbit is, contains a lot of cellulose. And the digestive system of the rabbit does not produce any enzyme that breaks down the cellulose. The other structures of the digestive system also does not have any bacteria to break down the cellulose. For example, in the ruminant, the rumen contains bacteria. So as soon as the animal consumes the food, the food enters into the rumen, the bacteria breaks down the food. So by the time the food moves down along and it reaches the ileum, absorption can take place. But this structure is not present. There's no rumen in the rabbit. So most of the digestion occurs after the nutrients should have been absorbed. So if the digestion occurs in the cecum and the and the food is removed through the anus, well, it will make no sense because the animal will not be able to benefit. The animal will not be able to get the nutrients from the food, from the undigested, from the food that has been released. So what the animal does, it, it, it takes back, it consumes or re-ingest that soft droppings, the black pellets, and, as the, and the black pellets will now have partially digested food. The, the cellulose will break down and the enzymes, the amylase, can now work on the, on the carbohydrates that is present and release the nutrients. The carbohydrates can finally break down into glucose. So when it passes, it, so the food has to pass down a second time through the digestive system. So when it passes through the digestive system a second time and it passes the ileum, well then all the nutrients will be absorbed into the animal. So I hope that explains clearly how digestion in rabbits occur. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. So in this lesson, what we looked at was really digestion in the different animals. We look at digestion in ruminants and non-ruminants. We look at digestion in the ruminant. In ruminant, um, a particular example that we used was cow. Remember, the ruminants have four, four chambered stomach. And we looked at digestion in non-ruminants. We look at digestion in poultry. Remember the poultry, when the food enters, it enters into the crop, it has to pass through the proventriculus, it also has to pass through the gizzard and so forth. So you need to review those structures. We looked at digestion in, in pigs. The digestion in pigs, I would say, is very similar to digestion in human beings. And the digestion in the rabbits are also kind of similar to the pigs and, and humans, except that most of the digestion happens at the last part of the digestive system. So if there's any question, feel free to ask those questions and see you in the next lesson.
ถูกจริง